No frame drop, you know. Diodes, got the socket, got the bump ons, got the actual microcontroller. What is in here? USB C port, oh. reset button, boot button, got the fuse. Okay. over the floor. dropping. Thank goodness. Alright. Take that. Unroll our roll of diodes.
few at a time. Go ahead and put these guys in. Black bar towards the square, so all of the diodes are going upwards. In retrospect, I probably should have bent my dies a little tighter. This is the tightest radius bend that I've seen for, uh, for a keyboard. <laughs> yeah, so far I've been bending my diodes. bending them this far when they should be this far or close. So now I have to go ahead and rebend everything. Probably. Yep, there we go. That means is that I have to find something thinner to bend my diodes on. Let's see. It's thinner. Barely. Oh, the music's low, what the hell? Oh, I thought it was pretty quiet. Thanks, room. Uh, lubing comes later. So, here's, here's the jar that I was using to lube my switches. I still have to lube the stabilizers, the little pieces that go on the big, the big parts of the keyboard. That's what this guy's for. Super lube, multi-purpose synthetic grease. So that'll that'll show up soon. Turn on the music just a little more. There we go. Instructions for these things are bend diodes as cl bend legs straight down as close to diode as possible, which this is not. Multi-purpose, baby. Tilt this down this way. You know, tummy action going there. Charles Dickens, am I going to bend these things closer? Let's see, yeah, multi purpose synthetic grease. Food, food grade. Technically, I can eat this one. So, the aesthetic for this piece is that all the all the um, all the or all the uh, internals are exposed once the board is built. So you get kind of that techy 
sort of look to it. Man, food grade? To think that I've been messing with Astroglide this entire time when I could have just been using this. Vander Diode's tighter. There we go. four I've got four diodes done out of the rest of this board which is approximately 70 there's approximately 70 more diodes that I have to put in and then we flip it over to the back and then solder it down This one's the uh, this one's the V2. So I just got this um, when uh, when it dropped like a couple weeks ago, and then it sold out in about three minutes. And then they opened up the pre-orders for it. Apparently, the black sold out a lot faster than the white. So kind of glad that I got to choose the white because. It took a while to get through my cart. Nice, nice. Three on pre-order. I mean, for like, what was it? It was like 65 bucks, right? You, you actually can't go wrong with this price. No, no knobs on this one. There's no, uh, space for a rotary encoder. I wish, but I'm kind of over knobs at the moment. So for now, it's bare bones. I did buy a uh, I did buy a 3D printed case on Mech Market, so that's gonna come in probably at the end of the week. But for today, yeah, it's bare bones. Oh man, the the dial legs on this one got jacked up because I bent it like 50 times. And then the other unfortunate part with um, with getting it early before the pre-order is that my my discipline didn't come with foam. Look, room. As long as your cat types over ninety words per minute, then you're good. But, um, yeah, my, uh, in-stock order, it didn't come with the, uh, EVA foam that goes in between the layers of, uh, of PCB material. So, I kind of have to cut my own right now. So, that'll, that'll happen a little bit later. Yeah, this diode's not not having a good time right now. <laughs> Let me see if I can fix this. Pull it up manually through through the bottom. Kind of worked. I 
Damn, your cat's typing at 70 words per minute? Holy shit. Yeah, what I'm doing right now too is I'm bending the dialed legs at an angle, that way it'll actually like lay flat on the table for now. On a good day I can type 110 words per minute. I'm pretty sure Amadine's a little bit faster than me, but that's also because like I don't have a job that requires a lot of typing. Cornelius. So far these dialed legs haven't been cooperating with me very well. Unfortunate, but it'll uh, it'll work out in the end. Let's see. Also gotta make sure that each of the diodes is in the correct orientation. I put this one upside down, so that's already kind of messy. We'll flip that around. There we go. Yeah, that looks a little bit better now. Yeah, you're right. So now I have to uh, rebend all of these diodes to make to get them a little bit tighter. The build guide says diode benders aren't required, but that's a that's a straight lie. Anyway, I don't think I can fix them on the tape, so I have to fix each one manually when I clip them out. Trying to be all efficient with this, but uh, it ain't working. Let's see if I have another flush cutter. I think this one's getting pretty dull. I've been using this one for almost a year at this point. Oh, yeah, that one clips. Wasn't sure whether to pick one up. Well, it's definitely more effort than like a typical build, but it's really cheap and everybody seems to like it considering the prices that they go up for on mech market.
I'm probably gonna estimate that this is gonna be like at least three hours to finish because with the typical keyboard all the all the uh, electrical components are pre-soldered just have to solder in your switches slap on your keycaps call it a day but for this one technically we are building it from scratch oh the diode vendor yeah nah it's easy to uh Well, you can kind of 3D print one, but if you don't have a 3D printer, honestly, um, each keyboard kind of has its own um, pitch for the uh, for the holes. So these ones are like really tight; they're really close together. Versus, I have a, I have another kit here at Navi 10 which I still <laughs> haven't finished. Um, but you can see the diodes are like way spread apart. And then there is kind of like a like a standardized spacing when they made the LED split PCB. Um, but that's different from these two, so. I'd say a diode bender is not really worth it. This one I'm gonna definitely gonna be putting a case on one because I already bought it, two because I actually like the uh, I like the sound of 3D printed cases. They're definitely kind of thockier than like say aluminum or you know regular plastic. I'd say they're pretty on par with like stacked acrylic cases. Yeah, it's gonna be the P3D case. Those, that's the only one that I know of so far that's on the market. Come on OBS, why are you dropping frames? It's... I literally have nothing going on on the screen right now. Cornelius, do you know uh, what switches you're gonna put on yours? Cause definitely, if you if you're going for tactile switches, um, you definitely do need the foam on there. Cause when I put T1 or yeah, these ones are the T1 switches. T ones. Yeah, whatever the whatever the um, the JWK tactile names are. But when I didn't have the foam on here. It, it didn't sound too hot. It was kind of plasticky. The foam on the the foam on the inside definitely helped out the sound by a lot. So if you're if you got the pre-order with the foam on there, definitely definitely put the foam on. can't decide. Yeah, I, I feel you, because... So, what I'm putting on this one, um, these are kind of like Franken-switch leftovers. So, I have, I have kale cream stems. That's, that's kind of... 
kind of harsh. Go this way. I think this will work a little better. Anyway, I have kale cream stems in Gatoron housings. So it's not even like the milky housings, these are just like regular old um, transparent top, black bottom, like plate mount. I had these, or these were uh, Gatoron greens. So they, I'm using the Gatoron uh, stems, or I'm using the Gatoron springs, the housings, and I put the uh, kale cream stems in them. And they sound pretty good. So, and after looping them with 3204, they're pretty, pretty darn smooth. So, I'm putting it up to the mic right now. So, Yeah. Frankenstein looking bored, you're not wrong. And the reason I just have cream stems on their own is because I put the uh UHMP UHMWPE stems in the cream housings which kind of sent those like those just like instantly feel a lot better I didn't even have to lube them but they feel like a lube switch Check the orientation. Yeah, all of them are pointing the correct direction right now. That's the part I'm always uh, paranoid about because the first time I built a let split, I didn't check. I wasn't checking pretty religiously, and so I just kind of put a bunch the wrong way. So I'm always a little scared of that now. I'll tell you already that this is like, even though I have to put all the components and stuff in, this is already a, like 50 million times better than doing a hand wire. I absolutely hate doing hand wiring. The last time, or the first time I did it was on a plank. That was a nightmare, but it eventually worked. I spent like, probably three days of work on it. Like not um not like i just spent three days but probably i put that many hours in it was kind of terrible Let's see, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Only 40 more diodes to go. I'm like a third of the way there. This is one way to spend Memorial Day, I guess. I think I've figured out my workflow now. This is keyboard built to honor the soldiers. Yeah, if you want. If you if you feel like what this is for, then yes. There's nothing there's nothing patriotic about this at all. keyboard to the state fair and deep fry it. Any particular stabilizers? Yeah, so I'm actually going to be using the, um, the C3 stabilizers. The, um, the ones with all the different pretty uh, colors on it. Let me pull those out. Let's see. Yeah, these guys. The PC or the e the C3 equals uh, stabilizers that were on uh, the key company. So they look pretty nice. They're screw in. Um, these are the uh, first batch, which has a little bit of trouble with um, PBT caps, especially Enjoy PBT, but it's not going to be a problem because I'm just going to be putting GMK on this. Either GMK or JTK. I still haven't figured that part out. I have a few sets kind of in the uh, in reserve. I'm just trying to see like what this looks like first, and then we'll uh, we'll kind of decide what key set to put on it after that. Well, we're, we're getting kind of to the end of the roll of diodes, so that kind of gives me hope. <laughs> Decisive. Yeah, I am. I am right there with you. Like I was thinking of putting the uh, creams with the PE stems on this one, but I want to put it on another keyboard that's probably more expensive. So I just have like a whole bunch of. Yeah, I have like a bunch of key sets just kind of sitting around. I have 
a bunch of switches that have just been kind of sitting there. of text here. C3. Once, once all the electronics are uh, put in and soldered, from there it's going to be smooth sailing. flux for the USB-C connector. Yeah, so I don't have flux paste. Uh, what I do have is this uh, Rosen flux pen, so it kind of looks like a Sharpie, but it just dispenses flux wherever I, uh, wherever I draw it. So I don't think it's going to be too different from the, uh, from the paste, other than it's a lot more liquid versus the paste is an actual paste. So we'll see how that works. If it doesn't work, then I'll cry. Yeah, the, the drag method is definitely kinda tricky. I've done it before for stuff other than keyboards, so we'll see how that will shake out. I think because the, the pinholes are so small, it shouldn't be that bad. Again, this is kind of uncharted territory. Man, I can feel the heat from outside already. 
How's the temperature in your guys' area? My my weather app says we're about to hit 101 today. So I am 100% not ready for this. I have like a giant box fan blowing over me right now. so far. Pretty hot but comfortable. Yeah, we were <laughs> we were like that in um, we were like that in like January, February, and then it kind of spiraled out of control. Here in uh, California, the weather has forgotten to... has forgotten what the words winter and rain mean. So it's just been sunny for forever, essentially. Skip steps, gotta... You guys are still in lockdown too? Yep. Same here, still kind of just staring out the window, but I kind of helped relieve boredom by uh, ordering just a bunch of different keyboard kits. Unfortunately, because of the shipping delays, a lot of them aren't even going to come until next month, which I think is when they're going to start considering uh, opening back up. <laughs> I feel you. I feel the same for I feel the same for my uh, for my postman too. this doesn't happen on your batch of disciplines but the the one that the batch that I have for some reason they put the uh, discipline plating on here but the silk screen the black is kind of come on I do it they put it on backwards so when the light doesn't shine on it, it looks kind of like a garbled mess. It looks like a barcode. 
seeing his face carrying my parcels is the only joy I get. You know what? Yeah, true. But yeah, it's, you know, it's not even gonna show once the keyboard's all built up, but it, it was just kind of like a, like a weird thing. I don't think the, yeah, cause I think it was supposed to go back here, cause it's on here. I don't think it was supposed to go here, I think it was just supposed to be the black silk screening. Diodes, everything's still in the correct orientation at the moment. diodes to go and then I still have to do the uh, the other through hole components like all the resistors and stuff like that The 3D printed case? No, yeah. It's honestly, it's pretty similar to the acrylic case or like the stacked acrylic case. And yeah, I think even like I live pretty much like an hour away from Pinoco, and even for me, the cost for the case would be somewhere like 80 to 90 dollars, whereas I got this one secondhand for like 55. So, I'm definitely happy with my purchase. Cause I have a few, uh, I have a few 3D printed cases from like other places, like uh, Keyboard Bell. She may... I don't know if she still even makes cases because she's been kind of inactive for a while, but she makes... Like these really sort of... Like thick... Meaty looking uh, 3D printed cases like this one. This one's a saver case for a... Uh, like like a generic tray, tray, uh, tray mount, 60%. But yeah, I love this thing to death. I use it more, but it's a little bit big for my desk, so I just kind of don't. <laughs> but this thing has uh, tangerines in it, and it sounds pretty insane. Like, we'll put the mic, we'll aim it at it. Pause that. But yeah, this one, it sounds like heaven, especially the, especially the keyboard or especially the space bar. So I'm definitely in love with the printed cases.
So I think what I'm going to do is solder all these diodes first and then I'll work on the rest of this area. Because essentially this is the same amount of soldering points as like a regular 65% keyboard. So we're essentially soldering everything like twice. Hello Francis. Well, you could commission something from me, but uh, not a lot of places are shipping right now. What kind of keyboard are you, uh, are you looking for? Because if it's like a like a compact black sort of keyboard, there's a there's a kit coming up from Novel Keys which I might be able to hopefully snag. But just letting you know now, you're probably going to be spending more than more than uh, most of the mainstream brand keyboards. Because unfortunately, it's more expensive to build your own keyboard than it is to buy one. the numpad. Okay, yeah. That's fair. You can also use it for stuff like uh, for like binds and whatnot. Uh... That case I'll let you know I'll do some digging see what's uh, available right now and then and then we'll go from there I'll uh, I'll let you know once I'm done building this Oh yeah, I'll definitely post a pic on Twitter, Cornelius. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah, it's like... Let's see. It's it's about midnight in, in the UK, I think. If my uh, time zone sense is about right. Anyway, yeah, I'll post it on Twitter. I will uh, see you around. Did I line that right? Yes, I did. Thank goodness. Almost there. Almost done with the diodes. There we go. 
go. Last one. There's still one on the roll. Thank goodness they gave me an extra. There we go. Diodes are all placed on and ready to solder. So we'll go ahead and flip it over. See this hairy mess. Let's see. Turn this bad boy on. Table is kind of like packed to the brim with all the extra stuff that I have going on. There we go. Hopefully, the way I've set up my uh, fan will also blow fumes away from me. Yep, looking good. I think for me, soldering is probably the fun part. Come on. Touch the pen. I think we've got it. Looks good. Solder is flowing. It's, uh, for me, it's almost zen-like. Honestly, I think I prefer this to, uh, to customer service any day of the week. There's the last leg that kind of disappeared. Go up. I honestly have no idea how I will readjust when my job starts back up. Because I think in these past two months I have completely lost, I've lost my customer service voice. <laughs> Cry like the rest of us do. Well, my only advice is uh, don't be essential.
I'm always crying same. Just don't be essential, forehead. So, does the stream look okay? Because, uh... My OBS keeps warning me that I keep dropping like 15% frames. I've lowered my bitrate and everything, so... If that doesn't help, I have no idea. Oh, thank goodness. cans in the other room. Or it might be right underneath me, we'll see. leg cam, that's close enough, right? Increase mic volume or lower audio, or, well, my uh, music's already, like, at the minimum where I can't even hear it, so let me turn up my... Mike, just a tad bit. Nope, it's not here either. Take a look. No, it's allergies. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I can't find my other webcam because uh, I have a propensity to lose things pretty easily, so no face cam today. Maybe the next time I build a keyboard, which is actually not going to be that far away. 
I have another keyboard kit that is arriving in sometime this week. Is what the uh, is what the tracking says. So right now the workflow is, oh, did I scratch? I did scratch the uh, the keyboard. Good thing it's the back, because it's no good. reflowing each uh, each solder pad because just want to make sure that the connection is strong
slowly but surely we're uh, shaving off the hairy backside of this keyboard. It's really hot. Yeah, it's actually really hot. It's about 369 degrees Celsius that I have my iron set on to right now. Should be careful with that. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. If I happen to die from some freak seventh degree burn from soldering a keyboard, you know what? I think that'll have been worth it. What's not worth it is that this diode didn't get any solder before I clipped the leg. So now it's just kind of free balling. Go in. Go in. We're already halfway there. Halfway there. Halfway there. I like we're not halfway there. Wherever far as hell is, I'm there.
I don't know why these solder joints looking a little ugly right now. Who the hell let this guy solder? cutting off legs to make it easier to solder the next diagonal row. Can you even call it a row if it's diagonal? It's a little bit more.
Let's go over the build guide right now. So let me make sure I have a good idea of the rest of the build. I pro I said three hours, but it's probably not gonna happen. There's like 50 more steps left to go. But you know what? Just keep grinding. This is where this is where all my dial legs were uh, looking like crap because I was still trying to figure out how to bend them closer. zooming in on this. Two, three more rows to go.
think we're good on that. just went somewhere. I'm sure I'll find it later when it stabs me in the foot. Four more and I'm done with the first step. Thank goodness that's over. Look at that. Got a full ass row of diodes ready to go. Just double checking that they're all facing the right way. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, this is the first step. Um, so, most keyboards aren't as intent, like, construction intensive as this one. This one, I'm essentially building it from scratch. So this is like the, this is the PCB. This is where basically all the electrical stuff is happening. And then the rest of it is all just uh, like the case and stuff to go around this. Hopefully the rest of the steps go by a lot quicker because this one has the most uh, the most holes to solder whereas the rest of these are all just like single like buttons or smaller diodes or resistors that sort of thing so the next step on this particular board like for most boards all of these will come pre-soldered and I just have to put the switches on so now I have these two diodes which are different somehow Zener diodes I think these diodes are like faster or something like that But what it all really just boils down to is that all the actual keyboard stuff or like all the actual like brainy stuff is like right gonna go right here. All of this stuff is just reading the uh, the buttons that I push. It's like building an arcade controller just with a lot of buttons. A lot of buttons.
Okay. Diodes are inserted. Now we go and solder them on. Okay. One and two. So that's step two. So that's done. Step three is to put the resistors on. So that's gonna go on this row right here. It's all labeled by, oh, come on, you can do it. Hey, Frogoid. What's popping? Well, this autofocus is not what's popping right now. But anyway, each one of these, uh, Each one of these things is like labeled with a different resistor value. So the one at the top is 10K, there's like 1.5K, 5.1K ohms. Now I have to put them all in the right spot. Yeah, welcome. Sit, <laughs> get cozy because this is going to take a while. So I have a whole bunch of. Uh, resistors here so they're all labeled so like 10k 5.1k 75 and then uh, 1.5 so each one of these goes to its respective uh, spot So I just clipped the 10K, so that goes into the 10K slot up top. Maybe if I put this PDF somewhere. Oh, you got a new mouse? Hell yeah. What'd you get? My uh, cousin's starting to build her own PC too, and she got she got the white version of the G201, or 203, which is this one that I'm using. V2 Death Adder. Yeah, pretty good. Damn, you get 60% off? That's sick. <laughs> Let me see if I can capture my build, the build guide that I'm using right now. Oh, hello. Don't do that. That. Let's 
so right now so it's got the build like the all the materials that we need right now I'm on step three step three out of da, 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 out of 18 so this is what it's gonna look like at the end yeah this is a super involved build this is like way beyond what a regular keyboard build would be like because I essentially have to solder all of the uh, all of the electronic bits together before I actually start doing the the typical keyboard stuff which is putting in the keycap or putting in the switches putting in the keycaps etc etc so let's see we will put this like that this is 100% for me this is uh, one of my quarantine builds that I got because I'm bored and also this was really inexpensive so I paid I paid $65 for this kit which I mean is fair considering the amount of physical effort that goes into this let's see so I've got the 1.5k resistors right now It does not include everything. It only includes the uh, the base kit, so the case, the PCB. So there's no keycaps. There's no uh, switches to put on there. So it's a, so it's what you would call a bare bones kit. Well, you wouldn't really call it a bare bones kit because there's not really a term for it. It's just a kit. And when you're doing enthusiast stuff everybody prefers to bring their own switches and bring their own keycaps anyway sorry it's off camera I'm just trying to manipulate it to go where I want Kind of just pull, kind of just pulled it off. So basically, these are all supposed to be uh, why can't why does this not focus right? Anyway, uh, all of these uh, resistors are supposed to be flush against the board, and right now it's kind of not. So I'm trying to fix that right now. And yeah, at this point, I don't have any extras of any of these materials, so if I kind of break one of these ones, it's kind of game over. Let's see, this one is also 1.5k. Close enough. Let's see, next is five point one K.
should just hire you to build me a keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> Fran or yeah, somebody else in here, Francis, was uh, talking talking about that uh, too. It's uh, definitely a lot more expensive than a. than a board you would find, you know, on Amazon or what have you, but... At least for me, the cost is justified. <laughs> True, fuck Jeff Bezos. Watch me get banned from Twitch in the next 20 seconds. Monka toss right there. 5.1 and then 75 is at the end. Hi, cat. Thanks for hosting. We're building keyboards today. Keyboard. Very, uh, labor intensive keyboard. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a chill stream, because this is going to take a while. And if my resistors don't just like fly, like fly everywhere, that would also kind of help. For sure, um, I'll... I can talk to you for a bit, like after the stream too, and we'll kind of look for something because I'm definitely down to kind of work on projects right now. The only issue is that everything's going to take like 20 years to ship. He's uh, he's trying to he's trying to commission a keyboard. There we go, so all the resistors are on there, just like what it says in step three. Now I just have to solder it on and then clip off all of this extra dot or resistor legs. Oh yeah, Cat has a P has a keyboard that I kind of fixed up. It's not like a true like custom build, but it does have the queso touch on it.
Yeah, I just switched out the switches. It's a, uh... I don't even remember what it is. It's like a... It's a Cooler Master. Quick Fire Rapid, I think. Which... I would have res I like it's a solid recommendation if they still made it. Unfortunately, Cooler Master has discontinued it and their sort of like main keyboard right now is like ugly hexagonal gamer trash. Yeah, shout out to Logitech for having a keyboard you can put in your dishwasher. <laughs> okay, so that's done. So now we are on step four, which is the USB C port. So this is going to be a little bit more fun. So all the uh, all the spots that I've been soldering are about. I really need like a like a new camera or just like a DSLR so I can like focus. But yeah, I've been soldering all of these ones. Now I have to solder this thing. You probably don't even see it, but each of these are like individual little pins that I have to uh, solder. So it's going to be even smaller than all the ones that I've uh, been doing. Yeah, thanks Logitech. Shout out to Logitech for having a, for having a camera that can't focus. Anyway, here's the USB-C port. So that's gonna be lit. This is my first time soldering this. <laughs> Logitech sponsored. So. Basically what's happening is I put it up here, it's gonna be mounted on it's gonna be mounted on the top, then I flip it over, I solder one of the big legs on the side, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply uh, flux on this row of pins over here, and then just drag my soldering iron over it, and then that should solder everything all together. So the first step is to solder one of the big legs, kind of get it in place. So like that. So then we flip it over, just make sure that it's uh, flush, which almost flush just hold it while I put a 370 degree Celsius uh, iron over it no problem so now that it's in place I solder the rest of the legs on so that it stays still go now I'm gonna take this uh, flux pen oh, should shake it a little bit
And what we're going to do is apply flux. Over the areas to be soldered. <laughs> the flux capacitor. And ideally, we just drag everything over. I think I put too much solder because a couple of them are still uh, still bridging. I think I definitely need a better camera angle for this. Give me just a sec here. Thank goodness Oculus sensors use the same camera mounts as like regular well, cameras. to the desk. Let's see if if I zoom out, maybe that will make it look better. Come on, autofocus, you can do it. Unless I gotta do this myself. I probably do. There we go. Anyway. So yeah, like these, like this whole row of uh, of tiny little pins. Is what I'm uh, working on right now. So at the moment, what I have to do is I have to pull off some of the excess with this guy, desolder pump. There is a good angle for this. Probably like that.
giving Solder the sook. Almost there. I think I just have to get this side cleaned up. And I think we've done it. Let me just check here. I think we'll just run the soldering iron across just one more time. Because if any of these things, uh, if any of these things uh, fry, then the keyboard just kind of dies. So just gotta make sure that they're all kind of sitting in their own little pool of solder that they're not uh, bridging. And this is like even hard for even me to see, so I don't even know how I'm gonna show this on the stream. Get some more lights on. looking good to me at the moment so I think yeah this is a this is a leg stream now look it's too hot right now it's like a hundred degrees in California I'm dying. This uh, heated soldering iron doesn't really help too much either. Yeah, just as I said that, like a heat, like a heat wave just kind of washed over me. Fifty nine degrees, holy shit, I will trade you any day of the week. Okay, so USB port is soldered on, so next is the two buttons. So this is gonna be for our reset button and our boot button. So when I need to uh, program these are the buttons to press. Yo, Mood, I need me some boba ice cream bars right now. Ooh. 
What time even is it right now? 427. I started at 2. I'm definitely not gonna make the 3 hour mark. There we go. I see a couple of diode pads over here that don't have a full thing of uh, solder, so I'm just going to go over these real quick. There we go. Yeah, I think I've seen those at, at my Asian market, just I haven't been able to actually go out and get them. Okay, so buttons are done. Next is the six pin header and the fuse. So that's this one. And the fuse is this bad boy. Keep all of those close. Let's see, so the fuse is going to go directly next to the USB port, so that goes right there. That goes right there. Solder that real quick. This is going to be off stream because I have it hanging over the edge of my table. There we go. So now that that's soldered on, then we fold it flat. Gonna be heading out? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna be working on this for a while. I think I'll be done with this around 6 o'clock. So 6 o'clock, 6.30 is when I think I'll be done. So if you're back by then, then hell yeah. If not, then I'll probably uh, save this VOD and upload it to YouTube or something. Let's see. So that's gonna go right there. Yeah, looks pretty, uh, looks pretty flush against the board to me. Yep. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep on soldering. So this ISP header is for if I brick my keyboard for whatever reason, which shouldn't happen because technically I don't even think I need to flash anything to this. It's using a newer sort of uh, keyboard firmware called VIA, which lets me just change all the, uh, like program everything on the computer without having to flash my keyboard. 
was like, why is it standing up? It's because I still have still have a couple of uh, legs from from the fuse that are sticking up. Views and header are done. Step seven, LED, which is this guy. Oh, power LED. Neat. see short leg and flat side of LED lines up with the square pad short leg so that goes closer to the USB port Reflections. That's soldered, clip the legs. Okay, next is the capacitor, which is this guy. So I got flux, I got the capacitor. We got flux capacitors going on. Longer leg goes to square pad. And white mark on the capacitor will be pointing upward. Okay. is the crystal which is this thing there we are no specific orientation thank goodness so that just kind of drops in right there Pretty flush. Clip those legs off. That's on there. Twenty two Pico Farads, I think Farads. 
capacitors. So these small blue boys, smaller blue capacitors with straight legs. So I have those ones, I have these ones. Yeah, straight legs. So that goes on either side of the crystal. Okay. Flip it over. There we go. The next are the wider capacitors. No specific orientation, okay. Could actually not be harder to rip these things off of the tape. Screw it, I'm just gonna clip them off. This time to just toss all of the excess legs that I've clipped off. Alright. Oh. It'll help if they are in place. So these go. Up here. They just kind of keep falling out. I think I'm just going to solder them from the top. So to do that, we'll set it on top of my flush cutter so that it's not going to push the legs out. And do it like this. Come on. Alright, 
right, let's get some of that solder off because it's not cooperating. Okay. There we go, that works a little better now. It's a little crooked on the top, so I'm gonna fix that real quick. Okay. Clip the legs off. I'm almost done with the electronic bits, I just have to solder the microcontroller on, which is a little bit less micro than most. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the socket, I'm going to solder this onto the board, and then this one should just slot in. That way I don't have to destroy the microcontroller with the heat coming off of the solder soldering iron. Okay. Heat up one tin first. very last pin kind of bent itself so I have to get this off yeah that, that very last pin on the very end it kind of bent just have to make sure that it goes in properly go in Filled the hole with solder. Okay. Oops. There we go.
There we go, we'll flip it this way so it's easier to see. So, there are 40 pins on this one, so... Just making sure that I attach each one. Try not to spend too much time on each pin, otherwise I kind of burn the I burn the flux. It's not going to be bad, but it just looks like a burnt pad. Hacked up. It's uh, it's not 100% flush, so I'm gonna reheat every pad and uh, try and get it to sit a little neater. Ouch. Done what we can, I think. Keep bridging going this direction, so I'm gonna work my way backwards. There we go. And now we take our microcontroller and we're just gonna slot it in. So now that's uh, that's all the electronics done for this. So now all I need to do is uh, put my switches in on, put my keycaps or put my switches on, solder them on, put the keycaps on, assemble all the plate stuff together, and then we'll be all set to go. So pretty uh, pretty good progress so far. So 
that was step 11. Now let's go, oh yeah, let's go ahead and test our PCB. Let's see. For that, we need a USB cable. So we'll just take the one that's currently attached to my keyboard right now. That's gone. We'll connect this bad boy on. And plug. Hopefully, I didn't mess anything up. Got the power LED on. There it is. Woo! Thank goodness it works. Let's see, window capture. Okay, so hopefully, if I touch the... Oh. Right. Let's put the light on focus. So right now what I'm doing is I'm jumping each switch hole, making sure that each of these things actually uh, actuates. Good, 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 good. Let's not good. Okay, so everything from tab to QWERTY doesn't work at the moment. Caps lock works. Enter works. So now it's the QWERTY, Quart, yeah, QWERTY area isn't actuating, so now what I have to do is I have to trace it all back.
How the hell am I gonna do that? It should just be a single diode fix. The issue is... Where the hell is that gonna be? Let's see, QWERTY... So, on the back it's all connected by column, so I don't need that. I need the row, I think. So I think for good measure I just have to reflow all of the diodes, you know, all of the uh, diode soldering areas. Because on a typical keyboard build, the diode is usually like right next to the uh, right next to the switch that it's on, but here it's all up at the top. Which makes things a little bit hard to diagnose. This one needs a little bit more solder on it. Hmm. Let's see if any of the pads that I flowed fix the problem. not. All of the diodes are facing the correct way. So what that means is I have to go ahead and take a look at the schematic of the keyboard and figure out what leads to what.
Let's capture the display so we can see what I'm looking at. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 are the ones that aren't working for me right now. That goes to diode 16. Okay, that goes to diode 17. So 16, 17, 18. So 16 looks good, 17, we'll put a little solder on there. Looks good. Twenty. sugar on that. Twenty one's kind of misaligned, but other than that it looks good. All right. Hopefully this works now. So diode twenty two. Nope. 
so that means that that's a bad diode and it needs to be punished. Via decapitation. Let's see, so that goes right there. Twenty-two. Go, try it out. Sent to the Shadow Realm. Let's try with the one spare diode that I've been given. Before we clip the legs, we're going to actually test it to see if this has solved our problems. If swapping out the diode doesn't get us good results, then there is a problem somewhere else. Moment of truth. Saying it, Chief. G W E R T Y. So six, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. I'm on the right switch. So if that's not the issue, I think I got it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's see, where are you? Keep this leg on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to manually bridge it over to the next one. I think there is an issue with the disconnect 
that first real quick. I think there's an issue with the next diode over. Maybe a bad trace or something. Because it only looks like it's soldering on one side, which to me looks like a lifted pad. doesn't work then I think I'm out of options. Hallelujah. I was right. Now it's all registering. We're good. So yeah kind of looks like crap. So that that leg is gonna be just kind of sitting like that. But such is the price to pay for a functional keyboard. That and it's on the back anyway, so nobody will see it. Cool. Now that that has been resolved, now we can go ahead and do the fun part, which is actually putting the uh, the switches and the keycaps and all that stuff on. Alrighty, righty. So next step is to put the screws and switches on, or screws and standoffs on, because there's no uh, there's no holes in the plate. So, the screws and the standoffs are going to be here forever. So we'll spill this out real quick. Okay. So four standoffs plus switches. Alright, let me go back to the top-down view, because I think that's going to be better for this. If only I had a second camera that was still here. There we go. 
maybe. Let's move it a little bit more that way. Cool. So now we go to the actual building part. So... The screws go on the top. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So real quick, just let me find out what I got. Looks like all the screws are the same size. It's just the standoffs that are different. So it looks like all the standoffs go on the bottom, and then these six standoffs plus screws go on the top. Threaded that. There we go. Oh. Five and six, which leaves six for the body. So everything makes sense so far.
so this is what is standing in between the PCB and the uh, the bottom so the PCB is actually going to act as the case to where instead of the um, instead of for other like custom keyboards where the uh, case holds the plate which then holds the switches and then the PCB just kind of floats there this one the PCB is integral to the construction of the board Okay, we got our hardware on, so now it's all screws from here on out, and we can go ahead and start taking our switches, putting them into the plate, putting the plate on the keyboard, so like that. Oh, I lied, my bad. We have to put the stabilizers on, so I'm using a uh, C3 equals stabilizers to stabilize the bigger keys like the spacebar, enter key, shift key, all that, all that fun stuff. And room if you're still here, this is when we break out the lube. So now I'm bra breaking out the super lube. Kind of grease up the stabilizers a bit so that way it's not going to rattle when you uh, rattle when you press down the space bar and stuff like that. Set that out. Let's see, so that goes this way. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is grab a generous amount like a grain of rice. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lube the entirety of the inside of this and then the entirety of the outside of this piece. This one's the piece that holds onto the edge of the keycap. This one's the piece that holds this one. This one goes inside this one. And then the wire is what uh, stabilizes the whole thing, kind of makes it press as one key. So, drop the wire. It's not good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like five or so strokes on each side on the inside. As well as lube kind of the area that holds the wire. So like right 
right in there. Keep that upside down. Reloop our brush. And then again, for five, about five strokes on each edge. as well as the inside. So there's a hole on the inside right here where the stabilizer wire is gonna go into. So that one needs a generous amount of lubrication. Otherwise, it's gonna end up all rattly and that's not a sound that I want in my keyboard. So now we put that, we put the two together, oops. Don't disappear in there. Yeah, I guess that's a good a spot as any. So for this one, I need one, two, three, four stabilizers. Yeah. So we're gonna do this uh, eight times. And there's no real science to lubing stabilizers. The goal is to just get as much of it on there as possible. Um, you can be a lot more generous with the lube than uh, the switches. The switches I had to make sure that I lubed, or I used a certain amount of lubrication, definitely a lot less than I'm using for these guys. And I also had to make sure that I lube them all equally so that it's not going to kind of bog down the switch. And right now I'm just using like a regular, um, this one's a, this one's a flat paint brush. It's like a really small size. People usually use smaller brushes than what I'm using right now, but I find that this one gives me enough control. And it's a little bit faster because there's a little bit more surface area to play with. So, top and bottom piece are together. We thread the wire in and should snap together like that. Gotta lube the channel that the wire goes into on this one. Lube the wire itself. in you're clipped all right looking good so that would go like so so that's where the backspace goes oh I dropped my lube it's not a very stable workplace But we soldier on.
Okay, those two are good to go. Coat the wire. So that one goes like that. And then what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to screw them in just so that they stop moving around. Welcome back. Yeah, we're on step 12. Step 12 out of 18. All the uh, electrical parts are done, and now it's just a matter of putting the actual switch, the actual key bits together. The stuff that you actually see. Damn, I wish I could go for a run and not die of heat stroke right now. Okay, so tolerances are a little tight, but it looks like it works. Awesome. Oh, actually, yeah, we're not even on step 12 anymore. We're on step 13. So right now I'm putting the uh, stabilizers on for the big pe for the bigger um, bigger keys. Get the stabs. Yep. See, look, you got it already. Put these up there.
stoked to see and hear this thing when it's done. Believe me, I am too. I have no idea how this is going to sound. Well, I have some idea how it's going to sound, but I don't know what it's really going to sound like until, I, until it's actually done. Is this going to be your main board? Probably not. This is uh, one of my many project boards for, uh, for quarantine. Because it'll probably be a it'll probably be a good gaming board for me. just because it has all the keys that you'd really need. But most days I've been, most days I've just been using this. So this is a plaid keyboard. So it's kind of the similar concept. It's a through hole keyboard where you see all the diodes and stuff like that. Um, but if you can see it's really, compact compared to compared to what I'm building right now so small and also ortholinear which means that all the all the keys are in a grid versus these are versus a traditional keyboard which has like a stagger kind of helps it's a little hard to get kind of used to but once you do basically it just means your fingers don't move as far Make sure you lube your holes well. That goes here. Goes on there. Grab a wire.
snap. There we go. So that's going to be the enter key. There we go. So the layout for this one is a uh, ANSI 65%. So it's going to be a mostly standard looking layout. Um, there's going to be an extra row of keys. Oh, okay, it's still on there. There's going to be an extra row of keys on to the right of the enter key. So that's where stuff like uh, page up, page down, the delete key, all that kind of stuff goes. Cool. Alright, one more stabilizer set to do, and that'll be it for stabilizers. Almost there. Yeah, this is actually, this is probably like the biggest uh, keyboard layout that I would go for at this time. One, because my desk is tiny, but two, I just really like the look of more compact boards like this. Like once you start getting up to like 75% and stuff like that, there's just too many keys. Oops. 
Yeah, arrow keys I absolutely need because I use them for a lot. And like the number pad, you could always just get a separate number pad, but the main thing is that it kind of makes your arms play out a little bit wider than than is ergonomically comfortable. So, even without having something like a, like a crazy ergonomic keyboard, just having a smaller keyboard like this is more ergonomic than having a full size. Yeah, mouse keeps knocking inside of your keyboard. Yep, that was the uh, that was one of the main issues that I was having. Um, that was one of the reasons why I started by or started looking into mechanical keyboards was because my keyboard was just too damn big for my desk. So when I was playing TF2, uh, having a you know, more than a 6 inch 360 is gonna make you slam your mouse into the desk. Oh yeah, speaking of TF2, apparently there's a mod called like Open Fortress, which kind of turns it into an arena shooter like Quake. I'm definitely gonna try that out pretty soon here. You can like B hop and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty, it looks pretty sick. But yeah, uh, one of my first keyboards was, um, it was, it was the Zowie keyboard, the Zowie Celeritas. They keep advertising that keyboard, um, on like ESEA matches for TF2. And I was like, wow, I really want a, I really want a good keyboard. And then I bought that one and it was like, yeah, 360 no scope, like railgun. Yeah, you can do that on there. Alrighty, stabilizers are done. We're done with the lubricant, so goodbye super lube. Take all the soldering stuff out of the way, because done with that for now. So that fits over like so. Looking pretty good so far. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put switches on the... I'm going to put switches on the keys that have uh, stabilizers on them reason I'm gonna do that is because I have to make sure that the switches are aligned so that it uh, goes up and down all right and then I don't know if uh, I don't know if you were here when I explained it but these switches are kind of like a Franken switch these are uh, kale cream stems inside a Gatoron housing 
And the reason that I did that is because these are all leftover parts from like other builds. So now what I need is a set of keycaps to align it up correctly. Let's see. Do you believe I have just the thing? So I have a set of uh, JTK Hyperfuse here. So. Yeah, the housing parts, so the outside, it does matter in terms of sound. So, because they're made out of different plastics. So, a clear top like this one, it's made out of polycarbonate, which is a sore, a slightly higher pitch. Um, the bottom part is, I believe, nylon on this, which has a deeper sound. So basically what that translates to is when you press down, it's a slightly deeper sound, and then when you go up, it's a slightly uh, slightly higher pitch sound. But because I because I uh, loop or because I lube these, um, the sound of the switch is going to be dampened a little bit. So let's just put the switch on the keycap, or keycap on the switch. Listen to that. That's good sound. Doing pretty good so far. Turn our soldering iron back on. Alright, so now it's up to temp. And we can finally start soldering the switches in. Cool, yeah. So I'm going to do the same thing for, for these guys, so the shift, the enter, and the um, Backspace. Backspace goes there. Enter goes there. goes there. Oh, hello.
Alright, so we've got those switches soldered in. So for now, let's take off the keycaps, put those away. Most likely this isn't the set that I'm gonna that I'm gonna use for this keyboard. Mostly because the main keys are already on another board at, at the moment. <sighs> Those are some pretty tight keys. Put you over here. Okay, so now we can go and start putting the switches in. So things should be pretty fast from here on out. What keycaps are you going to use? Honestly, I still haven't decided. Once I see what this looks like all built up, then I can decide what I want to use and then go from there. making sure that all of my switches are clicking into the plate properly because the plate is what makes sure that they're all kind of like aligned properly but the plate is also kind of flexible Sometimes I'll use artisan keycaps. I'm not really too much of a fan of them because I don't like how most artisan keycaps the it doesn't really fit the profile of the keycaps. 
my like when I'm uh, choosing keycaps, the main thing that I want is a consistent profile. So kind of like the like the scoop of it, like that. Um, and most key or I don't have any examples here in front of me at the moment. But when I do use artisans, they're mostly just like blank artisans. Actually, yeah, the only artisan that I have that I'm really considering using is uh, this one. This one's my Jelly Key uh, Zen Pond. So it's a space bar. Unfortunately, this space like this is a standard space bar, which most of my keyboards don't have a standard space bar. I used it on my um, my larger keyboard, the Satisfaction 75, but then I sold that board, so now I don't have it anymore. Yeah, it's super cool. It's like 3D, like resin cast. Like, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of workmanship that goes into artisan keycaps, and I can respect that. I can respect them you know, casting and molding their own keycaps and all that stuff. Just, uh, most of the time it's not really for me. Oh no, you're looking at resin keycaps. Falling down into the rabbit hole. into the shadow realm. But this switch in particular isn't sitting seating properly into the plate for whatever reason. Sounded like it went in properly here. And then what I'm also doing right now is kind of like testing each each switch. It's making sure that at least the ones that are where my left hand is are going to be like the really smooth ones. Because 
I tried to lube everything equally, but being a human, there's only so much that I can do to make sure that everything stays consistent. Go in. Uh, lubing is pretty much just a one and done thing. Um, there's people who lube their keyboards like at least five years ago and it's still going strong. And then essentially what you're doing is just kind of masking the inherent uh, scratchiness from the from the keycap mold or from the from the stem molds. Over time, even if the lube does uh, wear off, what's going to happen is using them over time is going to kind of grind down the the parts that are contacting each other and kind of slide them or kind of smooth them out. So that's why there's there's a few people who swear by having a like they build their keyboards with vintage MX black switches. So what the what that means is that they're from like super old corporate keyboards from like Wise or like IBM and that kind of thing. They desolder them and then put them onto the new boards. And because they've been used, you know, so extensively for for business and all that kind of stuff, uh, that ends up making them smoother than what a smoother than the uh, black switches that come fresh off of the factory today. So if you ever see a keyboard that says like vintage MX black, that actually means something, not just like a, it's cool because it's old kind of thing. There's also some other switches like Nixdorf switches and uh, Hyro switches. So those ones are like collector switches, which again are also really old, but they were also really rare. So people sell them for like $5 a switch or something like that. some like dumb insane insane numbers per switch but they don't even feel like premium or anything like that it's just that they're they're essentially vintage blacks but they look different and also are rarer and that's it Well, yeah, I made exactly the right number of switches that I need to complete this keyboard. Okay. Now comes the great soldering. So what I do, usually do at this point is I kind of look at it uh, from this perspective, kind of make sure that everything's all lined up, everything's all pressed in. Flip it over, make sure that the switches are all 
like definitely like lined up. You can kind of tell if they are like deviating by being like tilted one way or the other. At the moment, everything looks good. All right. I mean, I showed you guys, but I haven't inspected it myself. But yeah, everything everything looks good from my perspective, so this key in a little bit more ouch the switch pins are kind of sharp so I'm kind of poking myself with them right now as I'm trying to pressure fit everything in properly. Yeah, I've definitely bled more than once while building a keyboard. So when soldering switches, you generally don't want to spend more than like 5 seconds per pin because that's going to start melting the actual switch. But you do want to make sure you spend enough time on each pin so that the solder flows and makes a good connection between the circular pad and the pin from the switch. This pin felt a little shallower. Okay. And then what I like to do is uh, solder a row, take a break, and then take a break in between soldering rows, essentially, because you are imparting heat into the uh, into the PCB. It does start to heat up the PCB as a whole, and especially since that I have soldered on all of the electronic components definitely don't want to put too much heat on it anymore. Where's my dowser? There it is. And then just double checking again that everything's like all neat and lined up in little rows. Next row. 
I should have drank some coffee before this. Coffee at this hour will be up all damn night. Damn, I wish coffee worked that well for me. Caffeine, caffeine and I are uh, not the best of friends. But I suppose that comes from me drinking Monster every time I go to the arcade. Like if I was gonna drink if I was gonna drink coffee right now, it would probably last like two hours. And I'm back to being a tired boy. When do I get up? Well, it depends on when I go to bed. Sometimes I wake up at 7 a.m., sometimes I wake up at 12. Today was a 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. wake up day. Time is no longer a construct for me. I didn't even know today was Memorial Day until uh, somebody else pointed it out.
Yeah, after all of- after everything else, like all the electrical stuff, this part just goes like... way, way quicker. Although I guess it also- it's also because it- it's... because... I'm a lot closer to the keyboard being done. left the house for a couple months other than something like groceries. That is absolutely the mood. There's two more rows to go. The next step after this is making sure that all of the switches actually, uh, well, actuate. I don't know if you were here when I said this, but um, I have a case for this keyboard that's going to arrive sometime this week. So basically, this is a stand or this is a standalone keyboard that can that can be used as is, and it technically does have a case, which is like a this is called a sandwich case, which is basically just stacked layers of, of material. In this case, uh, FR4 fiberglass. And it's usable, but what I have in the mail is a 3D printed case for this. I have a 3D printer, but I can't print a case that's this size. So that's just going to get it a nice little finishing touch. It's uh, it's black with a little bit of um, like sparkle in it like a black marble looking sort of case. Sandwich case, yeah.
Okay, almost there. One more row. Spacebar's done. Switch three. Switch two. And... One. Soldered up, soldered, soldered, soldered. All soldered up. So, one more time, we're gonna go to my switch testing program, just make sure that everything's still Oh, I can tell I'm gonna like this already Oh, this one's not going It would help if I soldered the second leg Oh yeah, it's a it's a super fancy uh, cable. It's from a company called Asini, but that's another part of the uh, the hobby is having super nice um, super nice USB cables for your keyboard. There we go. Do anything other than look rad. Um, yeah, one of the main things is that it's an aviator cable, which basically means that what I can do is instead of unplug it at the keyboard side, I can unplug it over here. And then use it with this keyboard. Because it came with two separate tips, uh, a USB-C USB end and a mini USB end. Mini? Yeah. This one's the U mini USB end. So basically, I can just switch my, I can just switch my uh, cable over here instead of reaching all the way over to my uh, USB or, yeah, my USB hub. Alright, so I can go ahead and put this guy away for now. 
Yeah, it's it's definitely not something that's like essential or anything, but it looks cool and they're There's some function behind the form basically. Okay, so step 13 is done. Step 14. If using foam, line up and place the foam. Oops. Line up and place foam on the bottom board. So, a little something that was unfortunate was for the initial uh, sale of this keyboard, they did not include the dampening foam, which I kind of like on on uh, stacked fiberglass boards like this. So instead, what I have is foam that I got at my work, work at a craft store. Just regular old uh, EVA foam. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, uh, I'm going to use the bottom plate as a template to where I need to cut. Um, where is my pen? Yeah, ideally I'd like something other than green, but this is uh, this is what I got, and this is what I'm gonna roll with. That pesky corner out of the way. Yeah, basically what what the foam is going to do is it's going to create kind of a it's going to fill the gap that's it's going to fill the gap that's going to go between the bottom of the PCB and the uh, bottom plate. Kind of sandwich it in there. What that's going to do is it's going to kind of make the no uh, make the sound a little bit better. There's going to be less uh, less of a ping ping sort of noise. Right. 
I'll save that scrap for later just in case. And then what I'm going to do now is place this on top. Oops. Should disconnect it for now. Basically, see where I need to put my holes. Made a pretty good imprint. And then same for the second sheet. And I'm going to trim a little bit off of the front end just so that it's going to look cleaner once, once it's actually uh, cut. more time because it didn't go out it didn't turn out the way I was hoping off with the flush cutter. There we go. And then we'll poke holes with the exacto knife. Six hundred nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's make sure it actually poked through.
So I, I paid probably like 70 cents for this sheet of foam. And I've used it on two keyboards so far. If I was to buy the foam from the website where I bought the keyboard from, it would have been uh, pre-cut and the right uh, size. But it cost something like $5 plus um, like $8 for shipping. So I'm just going to use what I have. I did pretty good with the cuts, just uh, there's a little bit to trim off of the edges. Because while green is a fine color and all, I don't really want it to show. I think that's enough trimming on that sheet. Now, we're going to work on our second sheet here. Also trying not to cut myself because that will also be very bad. And then I think just to be a little proactive, I'm going to just trim off a bit off of the edges. 
like a couple millimeters or so. <laughs> it might also be my uh it might also be my mouse i have a i just updated which gives you a visualizer on the mouse Ding earlier was dinner. I'm almost done here, so I'm gonna finish building this, test it out for a little bit, and then uh, we will go eat dinner because I'm hungry. I've been at this since two. All right, I got the foam. is this one. Using the shorter screws. Oh, am I still here? Actually, I'm not sure what's for dinner. We will find out soon enough.
Inbound. was the bell for dinner. We're almost done. I can taste it. Now I got these guys, so these are acrylic pieces for the uh, for the acrylic foot. That's what's going to give this an angle. Bing bong. suck at peeling acrylic. There we go. Oh. There we go. Yeah, we have a dinner bell. It's a, it's a more effective form of communication than texting, hey, dinner's ready. Because our phones are usually like on vibrate or whatever.
That's kind of a neat look, actually. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I'm like dropping a bunch of frames and I'm like super behind. Not much I can do. I'm on a wired connection. Short of yelling at Comcast again, I don't know that there's much else I can do to fix this. Sometimes, sometimes it lets me stream and it's not too far or there's like no delay. Usually when I stream Beat Saber, it's okay, but not today apparently. So there's the uh, there's the acrylic foot that's going to give it an angle, well, or when it's on the desk. And then, last but not least, is the acrylic guard that goes over the electronics. Stream is jumping around. I fixed everything on my end. It's either Comcast or it's Twitch. goes right up there. Unfortunately, the only other the only other internet company in this area is AT&T, which is just as bad, except they're a lot slower than Comcast. So this is kind of lesser of two evils right now. All right, that is a finished keyboard. Now it just needs keycaps. Yeah, 
now because the because uh, of the stabilizers are blue or are Tiffany blue aqua themed. We're gonna use uh, JTK aqua. It's a pretty close match color wise. Most of the uh, most of the basic keys are here, and then I just have to find the rest of the set. Use the FGHJ. And don't do what I'm doing and just kind of like spill it out all over the workspace. I'm just doing this because I know that this is where most of the keycaps that I'm looking for are. Three, four, five, six, seven. ERTY. Control goes there. Oh yeah, this is probably one of my favorite key sets in terms of color, like aqua, teal, that kind of stuff. That's my jam. Four, three, chord U. Yeah, basically it's puzzle time. Shift goes here. sounding backs or space bar hell yeah Just a sucker for light tone keycaps with vivid color accents. Alt, control, control. Colon goes there. the Q, I, up arrow, there's the zero, there's my enter key,
put print screen up on there. There's the alt key. That goes right there. E. And so this set has uh, novelty keys, which are not so much like artisans, but they're part of the they're part of the keycap set. Sometimes they're, you know, little faces like that. Other times they're, uh, other neat stuff. Wow, well, turns out I have everything I need. That's cool. back in here or turn them to the tray later on but yeah we are officially done we have made a keyboard now turn off the fan Card, yep. Yep. Oh, I forgot to put on the bump ons. Putting on rubber bump ons so that it doesn't uh, slide around. sound test and then I have to go to dinner because I'm hungry. <gasps> oh, it sounds good. So one thing that I usually do that I haven't done here is uh, switch backspace with the pipe key. Usually I like having my backspace right over here just because it's a lot more ergonomic than having to reach up here. All right, we'll turn off the music. Oh. Let's hope this comes through my laggy internet right now. Got that, do that. All right.
Oh my goodness. Nasty. I've been I was so used to typing on the ortholinear keyboard, it kind of messes up my muscle memory. That and uh, the backspace is not where I want it right now. But this is probably this is one of the nicest sounding keyboards that I've ever made. So let's go again. Yeah, that's a really good sounding keyboard. Well, my work here is done. I'm going to uh, eat dinner, then take pictures, post it up on like Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff. Thank you for uh, coming along on this ride with me. And we'll see what happens in the next, or because again, I have, I have a case coming for this, and then I also have um, another keyboard build coming within the week. If, uh, if tracking's to be believed. But for now, we will end it for today. Thank you for watching. See you later.